Hello, viewers, and thanks for tuning in. This is Higher Education Matters. I'm Jeb Spaulding, the Chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges System, uh, and in this program we explore issues that are uh, current in higher education. We have interesting guests. Uh, we try to really inform people about opportunities and challenges in the higher education realm, not just with the Vermont State Colleges, but in higher education in general. I do want to let people know in the Vermont State Colleges system we have a variety of institutions. Uh, we have Community College of Vermont which has 12 locations around the state, a variety of courses and associate's degree programs. A third of the courses delivered on community, by Community College of Vermont are online so we have flexible delivery systems to make it uh, more convenient for people to take advantage of Community College of Vermont. We have uh, Castleton <coughs> University in Rutland County which is uh, a wonderful uh, liberal arts education with a bent on the professions and, and, and really uh, robust experiential education, 25 NCAA sports, if not more. Uh, if you haven't been to Castleton for a while, uh, you ought to check it out. Uh, we are very proud of Northern Vermont University, which has been uh, the first class entering as a, a unification of Johnson State College and Linden State College into a a university that can offer more as a combined institution than alone, uh, whether you want to do foreign exchange programs or uh, really uh, strong professional programs or liberal arts, they've got it all there. And of course, Vermont Technical College with a campus in Williston, campus in Randolph Center, and also delivered around the state. I can't think of too many higher education opportunities or, 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 or possibilities more valuable than Vermont Technical College where in a two-year degree program, the job placement rate is near 100 percent. Of course, they have bachelor's degrees and a master's degree in computer science as well. So that's a bit about the Vermont State Colleges system, but that's not really what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about a new benefit that's being offered to National Guard members in Vermont. And our guest is Colonel Gregory Knight. Greg, thanks very much for coming on. You know, it's people, I think, want to know a little bit about you. Well, I was amazed reading your resume, how many, you know, uh, how many medals you've acquired. So you've been, you know, in a variety of things in your life, but you've been active, you've been in the Air Guard, the Army Guard, served in Iraq. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, thank you for the invitation, Chancellor. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, it's been a great uh, career for me. Um, mm -hmm. I think the military and, and the Vermont Guard in particular is an organization of opportunity. Right. Um, so I've taken advantage of that. I've had uh, a very diverse experience. Uh, as you noted, the Air Guard, uh, I was enlisted for 13 years um, and then completed my education through Vermont State Colleges. Okay. Uh, went to CCV first, then went to Johnson, uh, now Northern Vermont uh, University Johnson. Um, achieved my commission um, and then, uh, you know, the rest has been history. I went full-time guard right. uh, in 2000 uh, on the Army side right. um, and just pursued opportunity uh, since then. It's been great. Well, well, this, you know, we really do want to let people know about this exciting <coughs> new program, which is brand new, starting in January, I believe. And, you know, this is meant to actually uh, help people that are already in the Guard, but also Correct. encourage other people to join the Guard. And Correct. we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm just interested, you know, for Vermonters that might not be familiar with uh, the kinds of things they will do when they're in the, in the, in the Guard, mm -hmm. Air or Army, uh, you know, what are the, what are the kind of uh, uh, learning experiences somebody might have when they join and why would this be helpful for their career? Well, a lot of folks don't understand, first, the mission of the Guard. We have a dual status mission, a dual role. Uh, first is to serve our state. We work for the governor, we work for the legislature in times of civil emergency. So we maintain our readiness there. We have response forces ready, ready to go. And then if in time of national emergency right. or operational yeah. need by the Department of Defense, then we would be activated. Yeah. Um, but within the Guard itself, we, we have, even for a small state, we have so many uh, different and varied specialties, um, whether on the enlisted side or on the officer side. Um, first, I would tell you, we, we have uh, a new cyber team, uh, okay. and, there's, and, and specialties change all the time. But you become generically what's a signal specialist, but actually you're working um, could be a land manager, it could be you know, software, it could be network defense, all the way through uh, diesel mechanics. Um, if you want to be infantry, you can be infantry. On the Air Guard side, they have structural mechanics, um, avionics technicians, uh, fuel specialists, armament specialists. There's just a, a vast diversity uh, of, of things for folks to do. And I would tell you that that is still a part-time job. 
and, and you can do things on the outside, uh, you can pursue your career. Right. Um, so are there some, some Vermonters that will do it full-time, active, Correct. and then some time that are uh, part-time and reserve as well? Correct. Yeah. So what, what happened in, in my case is, is, is an example. I did 11 years of law enforcement in Vermont, and I maintained my status as a traditional guard soldier right. um, or airman, uh, depending because I transitioned at some point in the middle. But during that time, as noted, I got my degree. Um, while I enjoyed law enforcement, I really enjoyed being in the military. And, and as a part-time soldier, that kind of gave me you know, a little bit of what I wanted, but I really enjoyed and, and had a great deal of passion for right. the organization. So. The opportunity came and I was competitive enough to be selected, so very fortunate. So I'm just curious, could you have uh, progressed to the stage you're at, a colonel, uh, without having a four-year degree? No. No. Nope. So. Absolutely not. Because these so, days there seems to be some some kind of devaluation going on of like, you know, the value of a, of a bachelor's or a four-year degree. And, right. I, I think... You know, people often don't realize that, you know, if they don't want to limit their potential, they might think about that a little yes. bit. Yes. So I would tell you, for, for us... Um, our force is actually quite educated. I, I think there, from years past, there was a, uh, this, this stigma that went with military service. So, hey, listen, you don't have anything else to do, I, you just join the military. I would say it's the smartest thing I could have possibly yeah. done because it led, again, to so many opportunities, including my education. Right. Um, and I've seen that across, uh, you know, our force and, and, and the wider force. I, I know a lot of people that are military, right. different branches of service. Um, but on the officer side, at least in the Guard currently, if you have 90 college credits, you can attend officer candidate school and obtain a commission. Now you can remain a lieutenant, second lieutenant and first lieutenant for up to seven years. But if you don't have a four-year degree, you're not gonna make captain and you'll be separated from the service. Right. But that also feeds in, you get that four-year degree, but now you use your benefits, your federal tuition assistance, um, your Montgomery GI Bill or your post 9-11 GI Bill, but you can apply different educational yeah. benefits to get to an advanced degree. Yeah. Um, and That's if great. And I think an important <coughs> message there is, I mean, you know, some people, or most people probably think of, hey, going to college, mm -hmm. you graduate from high school, you go full time and, and get your degree if, you're, if you stick with it. But there are all kinds of different paths to get to that degree. And That's you're great. a good example of that. You could go start at community college, you could go part time, mm -hmm. you know, people have lives that they have to lead and yeah, still fine. can pursue that post-secondary education. Yes. Well, so let's get right down to it. There is a new program that was uh, advocated for by uh, General Cray and was supported strongly by Governor Scott, mm -hmm. uh, and it took a little while, but something passed the legislature this year that people might be interested in. Tell us what that is, Colonel. It's the Vermont National Guard Tuition Benefit Program. Um, Which is what? It, it's a program where Guard members, Air and Army, will have their tuition paid for by the Guard in exchange for a service, op service obligation. That's the, the, right. the foundation element of this. That's awesome. Um, we were the last state in the Northeast, uh, so all of New England and New York and New Jersey, um, to have this. And for years, that's put us at a, at a market disadvantage. Um, yeah, one of the things that really sold me on this, just thinking about it, in, in addition to the fact that the Vermont State Colleges are all designated military friendly, and you know, whether it's, uh, you know, veterans are active, what, what have you, we, we are anxious to serve. Our, our mission is the same. Uh, you know, our mission is for the benefit of Vermont. Yep. Uh, and we see this program as, 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 as part of that role that we have. But when I heard that, you know, Vermonters could conceivably go to Massachusetts, as an example, yep. and serve in the Massachusetts <laughs> Guard and get free yeah. tuition, I mean, obviously, that, that really would put the, our Vermont Guard at a, at a disadvantage. And I'll tell you, uh, Chancellor, it has, and we've had I could tell you just off the top of my head, I know of 24 soldiers, just on the Army side, um, who left Vermont via interstate transfer because, because you're in the Guard doesn't mean you're locked into a state. Right. Careers change, families change. So you can do inter interstate transfer to another Guard state. Um, we lost, in less than three years, 24 qualified soldiers hmm. who said, I'm, specifically, I'm leaving the Vermont Guard to go to New Hampshire, to Massachusetts, to New York, to another state for educational benefits. I'm going to school. How do I counter that? That's just good business right. sense. I mean, it was to such a point where our former recruiting commander had his daughter go, and it was her selection, right. but she went to New Hampshire right. and joined the Air Guard in New Hampshire because they had this tuition benefit. So if you, the problem for us in the Guard to be a traditional Guard soldier as an organization, it takes us two years to make a qualified soldier based on their training seat availability and all right. that. So they're part-time. So they may go to their basic training in the summer and their advanced training the next summer. 
and then in two years I have a qualified soldier. They go to another state, they get a qualified soldier immediately, and, and I'm start starting over. over. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's a really nasty cycle for us. So that's why we hope that this, this program um, will come in. So you, you go to school every year of college, you, you'll have a two-year service obligation. Okay. Important to understand it's concurrent, right? It's not you go to four years of college and then you owe us eight years. You're in and serving as a part-time right. soldier or airman while you go to school. So if somebody is new coming into the Guard wants to take advantage of this, do they have to serve two years first and then get... Uh, no, the requirement no. is you complete basic training. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's great. And so have you had any early indications of whether there's uh, you know, a lot of interest out there in this there, program? There's a lot of discussion. I think we had, for the first time in a long time, we actually had somebody walk into the recruiting offices to say, hey, I'm interested, tell okay. me about the program. When does it start, Colonel? So there's a... a Based on, on the budget cycle right now, we're sunsetting the old program, the old uh, educational assistance program, mm -hmm. and it should be fully funded uh, this coming fall. Um, okay. and, and we're working with VSAC to get through the mechanics of actually implementation of the program. Okay, so it's not till next September <coughs> that uh, people could start to take advantage of the, the, the new benefit, which Correct. is free fully funded. Correct. Okay. We were limited on budget right. with, with how many students right. we could accept this okay. for this. Uh, well, I'm glad to know semester. that because somehow I thought that it was starting in January. But yeah, looks, it, I just want to make sure I'm yeah, the fall, it, we're, we're sun, again, we're sunsetting the old one. And, okay. and I, I'm not clear on all the budget cycle yeah, stuff, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, okay. we had a limited number based on the budget allocation okay. for, for that period, right. and then in the spring so how, of next year will be, will be fully funded. How does this new program uh, differ from you know, the, the current program or the one that's being phased out? So the old program was not an entitlement. Um, while we could provide some benefit uh, from year to year, it was unpredictable because you're, you're, you're tied to a budget. Some year as a student, uh, you may get a $4,000 award. The next year you get $7,000. What that means for us as a recruiting tool or as a retention tool to keep soldiers in the guard, I don't have a guarantee. I can't right. tell you it's right. entitlement. Okay. Look, if the money's there, I'll, I'll give right. it to you. Okay. Um, but that makes it tough. That's a right. tough sell. And that's right. what the vast difference is now it's entitlement. And in, in exchange for your entitlement, we were going to get a service obligation. So the Guard has run its own educational programs, right? You can get an associate's degree through the Guard itself. Am I right about you that? You can. Or wrong On the Air Guard that? side, there's a community college of the Air Force. Okay. Yes. And yeah, we have a number of airmen that have done that. Right. And that's a, not, a nice pathway to get started as well. But yes. Uh, do you think this new program will have an effect on the, the Air Guard community college program? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I'll tell you a chance, or I think it's. Um, a matter of personal preference for the student right. um, and again based on their work schedule their family life um, you know what can they do that's why distrib distributed learning is probably especially as an adult educated right. I mean that's that's important is, right. is to have that ability so right. I don't think it's a matter of, of taking business away I think it's a matter of what curriculum that student is looking for and what yeah. best fits them yeah but the other thing I would tell you and I took advantage of this is the crosswalk of military experience into college. So I was able to, I don't remember the exact number, but probably, I don't know, 30 to 35 credits based on my military experience. Because right. there, are, there are institutions, including our own, and we can right. do that um, via our educational services officer. They'll translate your military training into uh, to college credit. At least it yeah. takes care of a number of your electives. Yes, and, and <laughs> we do the same thing through Community College of Vermont, yep. the assessment of prior learning. And I know Community College of Vermont enjoys working with the, the Air Guard program. You know, speaking of personal preferences, um, while I like to brag about the Vermont State College's system, and you know, you're a, a great illustration of the kind of student that we, we take in and uh, are very proud of, and yes, you know, I mean, we really offer a lot, as I already mentioned, from Community College of Vermont right through Castleton, Northern Vermont University to Vermont Technical College. Uh, but one thing that's uh, important to, to, to note about this program, which might even be an advantage over some of the other states mm -hmm. for people that might be interested in taking advantage of the new free tuition benefit, is mm -hmm. it's not just at the Vermont State College's system. That it's, is correct. It's at any public or independent college. So. You know, just to name some. I mean, if it was, if you were interested in, in Norwich or Champlain, mm -hmm. Champlain, you, you, you Mike's. Could do that. You yes. can do that as well, which is yes. pretty exciting. So, and, and what happens with with that is, the way the program breaks down is, if you're in the Guard, Air or Army, your tuition is paid at the at UVM at the in-state rate for UVM, yeah. at the, the Northern Vermont University rate for for state college yeah. system. CCV has their rate. Um, and then the private institutions that you're referring to are paid at the Northern Vermont University right. rate. 
So um, that's, uh, you are correct, that is something that our sister states don't have. They right. rely heavily on, on their, their state college system. Right, yeah. This coming back to student or airman and soldier preference right. is huge for us. Yeah. You know, it's a matter of self-interest. I would have had to preferred to do it like the other New England states. But really, if it's all about yeah. the students yeah. uh, and about the guard, then I think this makes a, makes a whole lot of sense, and we yeah. were happy to support that. Um, do the do the independents have to opt in, or are they, or do you, in other words, they have to take um, students at the UVM tuition rate, right? At the Northern Vermont University. Or Northern Vermont yes. University. Have we had any indication whether they will do that? Uh, I would defer to General Cray on that okay. uh, on that question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I what level of engagement. They won't. I, I'm thinking um, yeah. But as far I mean, opting, in, I, I'm, I'm certain that they, they're going to yeah. accept the student. Right. Um, yeah. and, and there may be some give and take, but whatever. But I think what's important here between is that the I'm, student I'm, I'm, and, the, and the college that that's up to them. I'm quite sure I'm right about this. Mm. Is that it's not like the benefit would only be the Northern Vermont University tuition rate and then the student would have to make up the difference if they were to go to a St. Mike's, let's say, that St. Mike's to participate says, we're gonna participate in this program and we're gonna take them and, and uh, accept them at the Northern Vermont University tuition rate. Yeah, that discussion, mm -hmm. I, I would, again, I'll defer to General Cray, but I think that's probably more between the student yeah. and the school. And I know Norwich uh, yeah. is probably engaging in discussions on how they're gonna handle that because yeah. In the end, it's great for the student. Yeah. It's good business to bring people in. Yeah. Um, and obviously, well, it's, it's people good might want to look into it, but I'm pretty sure that yeah. you know the, the 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 universities and colleges will make a decision. Am I going to participate in this program? And yeah. they will, and they are agreeing to be satisfied with the tuition yeah. rate of Northern Vermont University. So uh, that makes the, the 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 available money travel even further. Yes, and we'll we'll hope that's the case. Yeah. So uh, how do people you know, find out about this? I mean, what do they do? Do they go through the guard or do they go to the institutions or, you know? Uh, the first place is to, is to contact a recruiter. Right. Um, I think well, that's, again, positive. getting over the stigma, you know, we're, we're not gonna grab somebody and throw them in an unmarked van. It's like, right. look, we're, we're open and transparent. This is a great organization. Yeah. So I, I think the days of, of high pressure recruiting, whatever the images of, of that is, look, the organization and the program whether Air or Army will sell itself. We have a lot of great benefits, uh, incredible opportunity, but the, the foundational element is you gotta talk to a recruiter because okay. that's what they do. Right. Um, and, and they're well informed on the program and, and um, we mentioned before the show all the other benefits that come with being in the Guard. Um, a young person now who, who joins the Guard, you, you pass the qualification test, pass your physical standard, um, if you qualify for a specialty, uh, you're probably eligible for some level of incentive. Um, and we have critical specialties that will pay $20,000 hmm. as an incentive. So now you get a $20,000 bonus. If you're a single uh, man or woman, you can get health care for less than $50 a month. And then uh, dental care, life insurance, thrift savings plan, all of this for a part-time job. And oh, by the way, we're going to pay for your college. All right. I, and I, what am and I it's probably going to allow your career outside of the guard to actually progress further and faster than it yes. otherwise would. Um, and that's, and look, it's a challenge, okay. Chancellor. I, I, nobody's, we're not going to sit here and tell you that, that it's not a challenge because yeah. it's a challenge for employers, it's a challenge for families, um, but when you look at this organization and the legacy of service, both locally and nationally and internationally, and the import that we bring to this state, right. um, we need to grow. We need to do better than we're doing right now. And I think that's why this program is so important for us. So, you know, who do you think this new free tuition benefit will be of most interest to? People that are getting ready to graduate from high school or people that are already early in their guard career or people that are, you know, just never, they, they might want to progress further and didn't get a college degree. I think it's a little bit of all three. Um, but the target market, obviously, is going to be bringing in new talent to the organization. Okay. You're in the guard. You, you have earned this uh -huh. entitlement. It is, it is yours uh -huh. to use. Okay. But if I'm looking at what we're trying to do, so if I look at our organization right now, we have a lot of vacancies, a lot of vacancies. Um, and and we, we have a critical need for qualified people. Uh -huh. Just like Vermont has a critical need in workforce development to get people here and keep them here. That's the benefit of having an educated workforce. And right. if you're educated, now you're absolutely correct. The resume building is there. Um, depending on their specialty, they're probably gonna have some level of security clearance. That alone, what's that worth to an employer on the outside? You have a vetted employee. Right. 
You know, they clearly have a work ethic because they finish their basic right. training, their advanced individual training, their officer training, whatever it is. We're a known entity. Yeah, I mean, it's um, a definitely a competitive advantage. Absolutely. So, so when somebody graduates from high school, let's say, and they're and they're thinking about their future, mm -hmm. and let's say, or they and they go directly from high school or directly from uh, you know, an associate's degree or what have you, mm -hmm. what are the entrance requirements to to get into the guard? So you have to be physically qualified. First. Okay. Um, right. And then there, there's a. Uh, a national agency check right. and a local yeah. agency check, which is you know your b fundamental background yeah. check yeah. to make sure there's no significant okay. uh, criminal violations. And then um, you have to pass the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, okay. also known as the Armed Forces Qualification Test. Right. Each service has different line scores. They evaluate them differently, uh, but the purpose of it is to, say, to identify what it is that you can do. Right. Uh, passing score is 31. Uh, the highest score is, I think, a 99. If you're anywhere in the middle there, it's just going to dictate what you can do. Okay. Uh, and then the recruiter will get, once you've done that, they work through the paperwork, and there may be incentives, there may be bonuses, anything that is payable. And they take you down to the military entrance processing station, either Albany or Springfield. And then we swear you in. And, and the minimum sort of time requirements to... You know, get started in the uh, Generally, I, I, it's, I have to defer to the recruiters on that. There, there are different commitments based on, I think, the level of bonus that you right. accept. It okay. could be a four-year active service commitment. Right. By active, I mean you're a drilling member. Right. And then you have a two-year commitment of, of inactive ready reserve where you would drill once a year as a, as a muster. Um, and it could be six by two, six years of the same thing, active drilling member, and then two. Right. And then, of course, this, our program, um, w is complementary. It kind of parallels that. You have a service obligation anyway. Right. You're going to go to college. You get your four-year degree, then you only owe us four years, and, and that I mean that's right. Well, now you're halfway to a retirement, and, and you can do it concurrently, though, right? It you're, is concurrent. Yeah. Yes. So it's like you know, at the end of let's see, it's every, for every year of college, it's a two-year commitment. Correct. So you go, yeah. That's why you said four at the yep. end. Yep. So it, I right? graduate, and then I okay. owe four years. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That sounds great. And again, that four years that is after you get your four-year degree, let's say, is that's correct. Is uh, you can hold an outside job at the same time. That's correct. And it just Although opens up. Like, uh, as you said, it's a challenge. Don't it's say a it, challenge. But, but yes. hey, get, you know, getting ahead in life is a challenge. Yes. And that's a good thing, I think. So. But it just opens up a, a whole host of opportunities. Um, oh, yeah. And there are some things, I mean, whether it doesn't matter what your role is in, in, in the military and the Guard. Edu education is good because it applies right. to the advancement process. Right. Whether you're a non-commissioned officer, that's points on the promotion board. Whether you're a chief warrant officer, right. It's the same, yeah. you know, to go from a warrant officer one to a warrant officer two and three, there are still educational requirements. We never stop learning in the military. We, we, we have two things going on here. One, I have to complete my civilian education to get to certain points in my career, but then I also have a professional military education. There are still gates that we have to hit on both sides, right. and that's whether you're a non-commissioned officer or, or a warrant officer or, or a commissioned officer. It's, it's a very educated force. Right now, uh, I just checked yesterday, 21% of our force has a four-year degree. Uh, I believe, what was my number here? 12% uh, have some college and 5% have advanced degrees. Right. But I'd love to see that grow. Yes. And I think th this, to your point earlier, it's people that are in, it could be senior folks, it could be new folks, it could be certainly recruits coming in. Right. Well, you know, people have heard in Vermont about sort of the demographic, the population trends. <laughs> And uh, we hear about the governor often saying there are 30,000 fewer students in the K pre-K-12 system now than there were 20 yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and there mm -hmm. are a lot fewer uh, students that are, that means obviously that the pipeline coming out of high school is getting smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also know that there are an awful lot of people, you know, it's actually about 40% of students that are graduating from high school are not going on to any post-secondary right. education or into the military or anything. So if Vermont is going to be able to uh, address and thrive with the general overall population trends, we really need to help that group that's not going on to find a, a way that is, right. is, is works for them and is meaningful and relevant uh, and allows them to move forward. So I would hope that this program would be really an, an inducement for them to uh, actually think about getting some discipline, making a difference for the state of Vermont, getting their post-secondary education. I do want, also want to say, Colonel, though, that within the Vermont State Colleges system, although you know the majority of our students, other than perhaps Community College of Vermont, which has always served a, a little older group, mm -hmm. 
uh, the traditional populations at a, is at, at a Northern Vermont University or a Castleton or a Vermont Tech have been students graduating from high school. But we see that starting to change. We have more adult students that are uh, in our classrooms. Uh, as I mentioned, all of our colleges are, are designated military friendly, so they've yeah. got a, a special uh, person that's actually, you know, their job responsibilities are to be the coordinator for folks that are military mm -hmm. connected on the campuses, have their own lounges. Uh, and we're thrilled to see an older population coming in that actually adds to the kind of like the, the vitality of, of the classroom. So oh, we'd love um, to see it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we yeah. can, uh, you I know, can help, tell you help when, that when, uh, group too. When I went to Johnson State, I was by far the oldest person in the class. Huh. And I was certainly the the odd person there, because yeah. everybody else was a traditional, young, what you would envision as, a, and I showed up in uniform and I was 10 years older than all of them. And how but did it, you like that? It was great, I yeah. thought it was great. Uh, yeah. The professors appreciated it because I just have a, I had a different perspective. Yeah. Um, I had a little more experience. Um, I don't know that I was any more mature, but, well, you know. but it, was, it, was, it was a really great experience for me. And that's what I, I would tell you. Um, the other benefit of this that we really haven't talked about it's good for cert certificates. So if, if somebody okay. were to go to a certificate producing program right. and you get a certificate in uh, whatever it is, right. uh, welding, licensed yeah. practical nurse, electrician, this, this past leg legislative session, the other thing that passed was our ability and, and the legislature's ability to crosswalk a certification on the military side huh. into a professional certification on the civilian side. So our military training like a, a paramedic or, or an EMT, because we have those, those are opportunities, those would crosswalk and, and translate, and I think it's through the Board of Professional Regulation that actually gets that's translated. That's fantastic, yeah, that's but really it's great. A, it's a kind of a, a hidden benefit. And the other thing I would tell you is, we need to really look at bringing people to Vermont, because people will leave, and they will go to different colleges and different schools, and we're not mm -hmm. gonna see them again. As, as I mentioned before, I, I had a, a great experience with Vermont State Colleges. It was tailorable, it was, it, it was scalable, it fit my schedule. It was a hybrid between you know, going to campus, uh, distributed learning, uh, independent studies. They did what they had to do to get me to where I could get my degree. Because I work full time. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a father, I, I'm, I'm a husband, I can't be at school all the time. Imagine the import of this when you've got folks outside of Vermont who realize what a good product is right. in Vermont as far as the higher education system. Well, we need to do they that, They can come too. here. Absolutely. So for us, it comes down to a matter of marketing. Right. Um, internally, I, I'd like to see uh, more engagement and, and get out with what we call a center of gravity. Who's influential in the community that can help us tell this story? Well, so, it's the high know, schools. Guess what, Colonel? I mean, we've been talking, having a good time. We are actually out of time. And Got it. I, I, I have to actually end the program. But I have to just finish by saying, a, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for your service to this state and the country. Uh, I Happy think this it. new tuition-free benefit for Guard members is gonna be good for the Guard. It's definitely gonna be good for the Vermont State Colleges system, and most importantly, it's gonna be good for Vermonters. So I hope Absolutely. people will look into it. They can just go down, talk to a, a National Guard recruiter. You know, if they wanted to, to come to one of the Vermont State Colleges, we've got people that are designated who can help point them in the right direction. So uh, let's hope for the best. And I'd love to hear a, a, a report in a year or so as to how this is really uh, motivated. Oh, I'll tell you, I, I think we're going to be reporting and then letting the legislature know how this is working out. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks, Chancellor. Thanks for watching Higher Education Matters. I hope you'll join us again. I'm Jeb Spaulding, Chancellor of the Vermont State College System.